What's up, Calvin Gang? All right, so we're back with the status question. So we've got this problem. We have a wedge and a spring and then these two locks. And we're trying to find the minimum compression of this spring. So how far do we have to compress this spring in order for the system to stop moving? So let's go ahead and get started. So we have that P is equal to 250 newtons and then our coefficient of static friction is 0.35. So let's just go ahead and start. So what we want to do is go ahead and separate these two locks into their own separate systems and draw force body diagrams. So let's start with B, B is the one on top. So we have this box, B, of course. And then there's gonna be a couple forces acting on it. So of course we have the force of the spring and the force of the spring pushes down. So we'll label that force of spring. And then we have the normal force of B, so it's normal of B. Uh, we're assuming the blocks are not heavy enough to be considered into the problem, so there's no gravity force acting. And then of course we're gonna have the friction between these two blocks. So which way is the friction acting on this block? Well, it's kind of wanting to resist the motion. So the friction is gonna be pointing backwards. So this is friction at B. Okay, so then we also have block A, so let's go ahead and draw that. Uh, so also we have all these rollers, so the rollers are gonna prevent the block from moving, but they're gonna not be a big part of this equation, so we're gonna go ahead and just ignore them for now. You can draw them in if you want, it just be forces pointing inwards. Okay, that's not how it is drawn. So then we have A here, so A looks like this. You know that this angle is 10 degrees. So let's draw forces. So we have P, of course. P points this way. Then we have normal at B, so normal at B is pushing down on A. So this is gonna be normal at B. Then this friction force is also gonna be there. And that's the same friction force B is what we're labeling. So I think actually this one's gonna go the other way. It's not gonna make a difference in the equation as far as I'm concerned, but uh, let's just do it for the sake of, um, sake of being correct. This is friction at B. Because if the friction here is pushing that way, then this one's gonna go the opposite way. Cool, so then what else do we have? Well, we have, of course, the normal of the ground here, so we can draw the normal wherever, it's not gonna make a difference. But let's just go ahead and draw it kind of towards the center. Actually, let's draw it on the bottom. Make things a little easier to see. So this is gonna be normal at A. And of course, where we have a normal force, we have a friction force, and that friction is trying to oppose the motion, the block's trying to go this way. So this is the friction of A. So then do we have anything else? No, so this is all of our forces. So these force body diagrams are gonna help us out. So let's go ahead and do the second part. So what are we trying to find? Well, we're trying to find the compression of the spring, which means that we might wanna do some of the forces Y on our block B here, because that's how we can find force of the spring. So that means our ultimate goal is gonna be to find the normal of B. So we have two unknowns, right? We have normal at A, normal at B, and then the friction forces. So the friction forces, we know that friction is equal to normal times the coefficient of static friction. So if we know the normal force, then we know the friction force. So really what we're trying to find here is the normal force. So how are we gonna do that, right? Well, we're gonna look at block A and let's think. If we take some of the forces in the y direction, we're gonna have normal at B and normal at A in it. And if we take some of the forces in the x direction, we're gonna have normal at B, normal at A in it. So there's gonna be two equations and two unknowns and that's how we're gonna solve this. So we need to start by taking some of the forces in the y of block A. So I guess I'll stand up for this. So some of the forces in the y direction of A, just at this block A here. So let's add them up. So we have negative normal of B. We have normal of A. And that acts at an angle, right? So it's gonna act like this, and there's a 10 degree angle here. So if we wanna find Y, we're gonna take cosine of 10. Right? And then we're also gonna have the friction force here. This friction force is also at an angle and it's acting downwards. It's gonna be minus friction at A times, so this one's gonna be sine of 10 degrees. That's how much acts in the y direction. And of course we're at equilibrium, so it's equal to zero. So what we're trying to do is isolate one of these. So we're either finding the normal at A or the normal at B. So let's try isolating the normal at B. So we're gonna add that to the other side and then we're gonna expand this. So it's gonna be normal at A cosine of 10 degrees minus, so we said force of friction is normal at A times the coefficient of static friction, sine of 10, and then adding the normal of B over. So then of course you can factor out a normal of A here, 
get normal of a, cosine 10 minus, so coefficient of static friction, 0 0.35, sine of 10 is equal to normal at b. And then so that is going to give us this equation. I'm going to write it here. So normal at b is equal to 0 0.924 normal of a. So that's one thing that we're going to use. So finding this is useful, so now we need to just find another equation, and then we can use the two unknowns, two equations, to find it. <clears throat> so I'm going to erase this. So now we're going to take some of the forces in the x direction of a. So some of the forces in the x of a equal to zero, because we're at equilibrium. So what do we have? We have p. We have force of b, or friction of b, so minus force of b. We have friction of a. And what does that act? That acts at cosine of 10 degrees. And then normal A is also pushing negative. So negative normal at A, and then this is going to be sine of 10 degrees. All right, so then we're trying to isolate normal at B. So let's go ahead and expand these frictions. So we're going to get this equal to P minus, so normal at B, coefficient of static friction, minus normal at A, coefficient of static friction, cosine of 10, minus normal at A, sine of 10. All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue. So we have that this normal B here is equal to 0.924 normal at A. So we have two unknowns in here. So if we plug in normal of B is equal to this, then we're just going to have normal of A is the only unknown. So let's go ahead and plug it in for normal of B. Everywhere that we see normal of B, we're going to plug that in. So 0 is equal to P minus. So normal of B is going to become 0.924 normal at A, coefficient of static friction minus normal of A, coefficient of static friction, cosine of 10, minus normal of A, sine of 10. So then we're going to go ahead and add this P over to the other side, or subtract the P to the other side, and then all the negatives are going to cancel. Um, so you're going to get that P is equal to, and then we're going to bring out the normal of A, so it's going to be normal of A. Uh, so it's going to be, what is it going to be? So it's going to be 0 0.924 coefficient of static friction plus coefficient of static friction cosine of 10. That does not look like a coefficient of static friction. Plus sine of 10. Right? So then we're going to divide that to the other side just to get normal of A by itself, and you're gonna end up with this equation that normal of A is equal to P, which is 250, divided by 0 0.924, coefficient of static friction, 0 0.35, plus coefficient of static friction, 0 0.35, cosine of 10, plus sine of 10. And that's your equation right there. So then you're gonna find normal of A is equal to 297 newtons, and that's very useful. So then what you're going to do is plug in normal of A into this equation to find normal of B, and you're going to get normal of B is equal to 274 newtons. There we go. So we, now we have both of our normals, and we can just go ahead and finish this problem up really quick. So erasing this onto our last part of the problem. Just looking at this force body diagram, if we take the sum of the forces in the y, we can find the force of the spring, and the force of the spring can tell us our compression distance. Oh, I totally forgot to write something. K is equal to 15 kilonewton meters. Totally forgot to write that. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So sum of the forces y at b is equal to zero, because we're at equilibrium. So it's going to be minus force of the spring plus normal at B. So add this over, we're going to get force of the spring is equal to normal at B, we found 274. But it's not asking for the force of the spring, it's asking for the compression distance. So force of spring is K delta X, or L delta X is the compression of the spring, is 274. So we're going to divide by K, get delta X is equal to 274. And then this is in kilonewtons, but we found this in newtons. So we want to convert to newtons because that's our SI unit. So 15 kilonewtons is 15,000 newtons. 
and then plug this number in, you're gonna get delta x is equal to 0 0.08 or 1, 0 0.0183 meters. And there you go. So that's how you solve this problem. So it's a pretty long one, uh, but you just gotta make sure to make a nice force body diagram and really count the unknowns, right? Friction is just part of normal. So it doesn't really, you know, you can just kind of consider that as one unknown. So there you go. So that's how you solve this problem. So good luck on your statics homework, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.